about is kick it up a notch. You know, how to make things a little more diverse in, in your chapters and how to get yourself into it. Um, we talked in the other room with the members over there about how you think about your chapter. Is it a meeting once a month or are you living it? Are you living what we do here? Um, there are so many people with so many different skill sets in each and every one of your chapters. And we sometimes think that everything is so over-focused on what are we going to do for the, this meeting this month and forget that you have a whole month long. And if you see the people who are working up at the other levels, we're constantly working on the stuff for New York State Women Inc. every single day. Every person, you can take things in your, in your chapters and you have people work on things throughout the month to come to the next meeting with. Um, in the programs, which is my big thing is the program areas and the mentoring. You know, these programs that are on there, if you go on the website to the program tab and you drop down, there's a resource manual on there. So for fresh and new ideas and things to bring to your club, and each time you have a new person come and a new member come, you should be kind of broaching that person. They're going to have different, diverse interests and things that they like to do and things that they can bring into your chapter, and be open to all of those things. Um, but in that resource manual, it gives you places to get um, speakers. You know, you don't have to pay for top-notch speakers. They're all over the place. Um, it gives you different ideas of things to do for meetings. It has different activities, community service activities, how to partnership with other groups. When we were doing youth leadership and we were discussing things like, where do I get these girls? Well, okay, if you're going to go to Girls Inc. or you're going to go to the Girl Scouts, what next activity can I have? that I can get this organization involved with our organization. And that's how you mushroom out and you crisscross and have people coming from both sides coming to join you and become members of what you do as well. So try to be more open-minded that it's not about a meeting for the month, that it's about something you're doing. And the more long-term type activities that you can have members taking small chunks that they're specialists in, and work on toward a common goal, a event. But start it up early and start people working toward it. And that's how you get the cohesiveness and the closeness. You know, look for new people to come in and mentor them. You know, teach them about what we do. Find new passions for yourself. Um, as far as programming, there's you know, there's mentors all over the place. I did an article last year for Nike about, you know, mentors. Mentors are all around you. And you just don't realize it until all of a sudden you sit there and go, I want to do that, or I want to be like her, or I want to do this. And you're learning from someone else. And I know for me this organization has given me a gazillion mentors, you know, who have helped me grow and change. And I think I've even been able to teach Lucille something. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's the other thing they have to realize, that this is also ageless belonging to this organization. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how young you are or experienced, and no matter how old you are, everybody is still all functioning on the same level. You know, and that's something that's very unique and very special with this organization. It doesn't matter. You know, everybody can learn from everybody in it. But when you're looking at your programs and you're looking at things like that, Use the resource guide. Take a look at the programs that we have, you know, the five areas. You got good exposure to Helen this weekend and the youth leadership program. And I think everybody's really enjoyed it, but how many people, well, we really didn't have it on the web before this weekend, but now we have it there. But our other programs are on there too, and they're mentoring programs. You know, <laughs> it takes a year to make a good speaker. And different people in your clubs have the ability to help that person get there. It's a project and it's to help another woman grow. So that's all I have to say. Hi, I'm uh, Kim Nowakowski. Uh, in terms of uh, knowing your community, that's as simple as just opening up your local newspaper and reading articles. Um, sometimes we've been able to, uh, we'll see a uh, somebody, uh, we have an article in our local news day that says, oh, people on the move, and it shows people who have been promoted to other positions. And we can look at that and say, okay, this is a woman, and this person 
appears to be in, within our geographic area. Maybe we can touch base with her and have her come talk at, talk at the club. Maybe, and that potentially could be a, you know, a future member by doing that. Uh, we saw an article uh, they have uh, in Newsday again on senior citizens and making career changes. And there was an article about two school teachers who became authors in writing a book about the teacher that wouldn't retire. Um, and so we reached out to them and asked them to come and speak, and then they became members. Um, it's also a matter, you know, as simple as opening up your local phone book um, and looking under in the, in the back for what organizations, you know, there's usually some blue pages at the back that show what organizations are in your area, and then look and see what organizations you might be able to, as Colleen pointed out, link up with on common issues and concerns. So, you, you know, some of our locals are rather small, but when, when you link with another local or you link with another organization, you can accomplish more through that. Um, there are a lot of organizations, um, governmental organizations, the Small Business Administration, um, and similar type organizations that you can tap into. We ran a program in March for uh, changing directions in a difficult economy. And we did it by looking in the phone book for what organizations might help us with that topic. And, um, and the, the Small Business Administration, they're eager to send people. And they're very well experienced in, in putting together a workshop and training materials and whatnot um, to utilize that as a resource. Um, check with your local school district. Um, see if there's a, uh, a young girls leaders club. Talk to the person who's in charge of that and find out, is there something that my organization can do to work with your group of uh, future girl leaders um, and either us putting together a program or them helping us to accomplish something. Because sometimes when you bring another uh, perspective to the table, you can accomplish a, a new and different idea that not, nobody in your organization has before thought of. Um, Obviously, you look at some of the local churches and what's going on with them as far as if they have food drives and things of that nature to do, um, or if you have soup kitchens that need assistance, you can look, look at that. But there really is, um, sometimes as women, we, we look at things as if we have to do it all ourselves. You know, we have to do it, you know, the, the chapter president thinks everything is on her shoulders, doesn't wind up delegating out, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else is on that. Uh, and we do the same thing as a, as a local chapter, that we think that we have to accomplish everything ourselves. We don't. We accomplish so much more when we're reaching out and touching base. Uh, even your local chamber of commerce, you know, contact them, find out, are there women business owners in my area? And then contact them to come speak about what products they have. The phone book and the newspapers are easy to access, easy to utilize, and to come up with new ideas of reaching new people networking with other organizations and bringing new faces to your meetings, which ultimately will lead to new members, because one member turns into two members, turns into four members, turns into eight members. Um, so that, that would be my suggestions as, as leaders within your organization is to think outside of the box and tag along whenever possible. There's nothing wrong with tagging along and, and taking ideas from other, other people and reworking it for what's going to work for your local organization. As I often say, I guess you all know who I am. <laughs> it seems that our own chapter for years and years and years have used our community for many, many reasons. Yes? Because we're recording this for the web, can you just say who you are in case there's people watching who don't know? <laughs> My name is Lucille Argensian, and I'm from the Professional Business Women of Rome, New York. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but as I started to say, our chapter has been very, very busy with the community. We have always done things with them in mind. We bring in people who come and tell us what they would like every now and again. And the best one we've had in the past year has been an estate planner, they got us all riled up as to how we were going to stay away from Medicaid. But, of course, that is an individual thing. But we have been very active in our group. We bring in speakers from all walks of life. We have even had military speakers come in from uh, Fort Drum. And they do drive down even in the wintertime. The one thing I wanted to say to you is that 
you have to have a passion for a group like this. If you don't have a passion, and I don't mean you can for everything, my passion is really public policy and legislation, and it's always been that way, or raising money. Those are my passions in life, actually. So what I want to tell you is that to keep your group growing, you have to sit together and really sometimes ask your people, well, what do you want to do? What's next on your list? I mean, my list may be different than your list, so if we put it together, we can come up with programs that we haven't done before. We meet at restaurants, and every now and again, one of the owners of the Savoy, where we usually meet, he'll come and say, where did you get that program from? What, what did you, why do you need to hear that? Because we need to learn. And that's something that I always tell him. Is that even if he has made an appointment with the estate planner, tell me he's going to charge me for it. <laughs> but anyway, I said to him, no, you're not. But what I really want to say about the business and professional women, I think you have to have a passion. I really think you have to know what your community is all about. Our community grows, and then some days it just goes backward. We have, some days we have a high unemployment, and some days we don't. But when you have people in the area who can help you and help you grow and teach you what is going on, you can use your organization with the chamber. You can use it with other people. You can mix your programs together. And that's kind of what we've been doing over the years. And it has just begun to, to me today, as we, I was listening, you know, we've done it without even thinking about what we're doing. And it just happens that way. So all I can say to you is sit around over a cup of coffee, but don't leave what you discuss and think you should be doing with that cup of coffee. Take it outside and bring it back to the group that you're with. Thank you.